Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had your swag, I smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and have her smash it right now. Today, we have a special guest on our show, the homie Rascal from the Homie Hangout. What up, Rascal? How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Likewise, likewise, dude. So uh, we had the opportunity to chop it up on your channel, man. Very in-depth conversation. Two, uh, <laughs> two reasonable adults, man, meeting on a common ground, right? Uh, what a go... concept, though. Yeah, man. What, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody a little about yourself? Yes, sir. So uh, I have this channel, The Homie Hangout. I've had it for over a year now. I don't think quite two, but probably getting close. Uh, and it's reframing the idea or, or at least adding to the conversation of what it is to be a homie, right? Um, help others move in excellence is, is the acronym, you know, what I use it for. And for myself, man, I, I grew up a homie, right? I grew up in the neighborhood, uh, gang banging, going to juvenile hall, all that stuff. I'm from the city, right? Set up the Warriors. They should have stayed in Oakland, no, but, yeah. uh, and, uh, but all around the Bay Area, you know, at, at 19, I caught a case. I went to prison for attempted murder. Uh, I had shot somebody in the neck. While in prison, I got involved with prison gangs and, and just sort of politicking and all that, that, uh, you know, all that stuff, right? And so, uh, you know, I ran as a Norteño, right? Northern Norteño. I paroled from the Bay, from the Pelican Bay Sioux, back before they emptied it out. Uh, in December 2005, and I never went back to prison afterwards. And so, um, yes, I've done some time, obviously. Yes, I have some experiences, uh, but my life is more than that. You know, for for the better part of all these years I've been home, I've really dedicated myself to trying to help others move in excellence, right? And right. Like, hey, I'm, I'm in the neighborhood and I'm with folks, not so much these last couple of years, but in general, you know, um, and I'm not the big homie. Right, from prison, this and that. That's, but that's the narrow lens that, that folks come up in. That's not me, you know. Uh, I'm not gonna co-sign your crazy, right? I want to try to help you, help you advance, help you move in excellence, right? And I do that without judgment. So I have a lot of people right. in my life that that are still affiliated with all different groups, right? Or or still caught up in behaviors that are not behaviors I'd encourage people to do, um, and that's their choice and. Uh, you know, if they get tired of doing what they're doing, they want to try something else, they know who to call. That's right. right? And in the meantime, I love them from a distance. But so that's what a homie hangout is. We talk about all kinds of stuff, right? We, we talk about prison, but also mental health, recovery, you know, relationships, parenting, homes, just life. You know, just like your life is more than your service to the military and your service in the Department of Corrections, even though those are huge parts of it, that's not all that makes you who you are. Right. You know? Yeah, no, nah, thank you for that, man. Uh, one of the funny things you said was, I, I'm not going to co-sign your crazy. I totally man. understand what you mean by that, man. A lot of people, especially youngsters, doing a lot of crazy things, man. Yeah. Everywhere. So was your um, commitment offense gang-related that landed you in prison? Uh, it was gang-related, but as a part of the plea, it, I didn't get prosecuted as gang-related, right? And so uh, I was the only one that went to jail for my case, right? Uh and so it's just me. I saw somebody. I got told on by by folks that I thought were friends, and okay. went to prison. Kind of similar story, right? Um, yeah. And so initially, I was charged with a whole range of things, right? Inciting a riot and all the different ancillary charges, right? The the shooting from a you know at an inhabited building and county limits and you know so tons of charges. Um, but but I you know I played out and, and that was it. I got ten years. Okay, so so, so when you hit prison, did your mm -hmm. gang activity stay neutral? Get turned up? Did it? Was it a slow progress? Kind of. I want to know. Talk me through from being a a gang member in the streets to the introduction to the prison. Because I'm gonna go somewhere with this. Sure, um, I, and it's a good question. So for myself. I wasn't surprised that I went to prison. Okay. Um, I, you know, I did a, a fair amount of juvenile time. I never went to YA, but I, I did a fair amount of juvenile time. So prison was in the cards for me anyways. Um, and my thing was, look, I was a homeboy, quote unquote, on the streets, right? I, I was a northern, I was a northern on the streets. That's what I'm going to be in prison. And then I, I hadn't known 
uh, uh, going in, I didn't really understand kind of the discipline, the structure for, you know, no pun intended, uh, that, that existed in there. And so once I caught wind of that, like, oh, schooling and education, this, oh, I was mesmerized, right? I was, that was right up my alley. And, and so I jumped in with, with both feet, right? Let me, if I'm going to represent this, let me learn all that there is to learn about how to represent this the right way, you know? Um, and so that was the mindset I had coming in and, and kind of fueled what my time looked like. With that mindset at that time, at that age, were you willing to do pretty much anything for the cause? Oh, yeah, of course. I That was kind of a no-brainer to me. I didn't really understand why anybody would feel differently. Because at that stage and in my mind, this is such a noble thing. Like, oh. being a Norteño was so cool, but more than that, it's so essential. Mm. Like, and... Wow, all this time I was just wearing red and throwing up a one four, but but there's so much more, and you know what I mean. And yeah. so, uh, it's I was all in. I was all in, and being young, I, I've said before, but but I gotta be careful how I word it. I did my time to some degree at the beginning, as if I was a lifer. Right. right? Now that's not identical because the fact of the matter is, there's something. You know, something happens consciously and emotionally when the Department of Corrections tells you you're never coming home, right? You don't have a date or you have a date that's 400 years from now. Right. So I don't pretend to know what that's like because I got 10 years and I didn't get a life sentence. My attitude, though, was, okay, I got one strike. I'm 19. I'm, you know, living this lifestyle behind the wall. I'm bound to catch more time and I'll probably never go home. And that's okay because I can do this. This is fine. Right. Uh, so that's how I carried my, that was my attitude up until like the last year before I came home, really. You know. In hindsight, looking back, would you say that was on par with maybe brainwashing techniques similar to what they say military will brainwash you to get them yeah. to do? Very similar. Uh, I, so, yes, I agree. And I think the comparison uh, is is a legitimate one, right? It's, and brainwashing, it gets a bad rap sometimes. Right, right, right. <laughs> and what I mean is, is uh, and and I don't support prison gangs. I'm not a fan of any prison gang. I'm, I'm you know, they're all trash in my book, right? Uh, so, so this is not me trying to, like, Oh, well, it was kind of cool. No, it right, wasn't. Right, right. I, no, I hear what you're uh, saying. But you, like you say, even with the military, you get these young folks, you build them into who you want them to be, right? And that's what allows the machine to continue. And it's not a democracy. Not everybody just gets to come and be however they want to be and just add to the melting pot of this organization. No, that's right. That's not how it works. Who you are, where you're from, and what you're about doesn't actually matter. What matters is how well you fit into this mold, you know? But it's a process to get you to to fit. Uh, and, and some folks make it and some folks don't. Right. You know, it's how it goes. With that being said, Clearly, you guys had your, your guys' reglas. You guys had your guys' rules that you guys had to follow, right? And then here comes the green side, which is kind of funny. I say here comes the green side because it is a prison, right? Yeah. Were you aware of our rules? Did you, did you, were you more fearful of breaking your guys' rules or our rules? Oh, our own rules, of course. Oh, it's. But sometimes breaking your guys' rules is breaking our rules, too. Correct. Right? No. And, and so those were the only rules. I only cared about, uh, you know, uh, offending or, or, or making life difficult for or, or disrespecting a CO to the extent that that would have a negative consequence on me within my own circle. Right. So it. 
it wasn't out of care and concern for for the guys in green, right? It was there's boundaries in how we conduct ourselves, right? And 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 in particular with the folks that I ran around with, um, there's a premium put on carrying yourself respectfully, not drawing unnecessary attention. Um, you know, understanding that you're there to do a job and we're there to do a job, right? And and so we really try to stay, we try to stay out of your guys' way, um, you know, and, and kind of move forward. So back at that time, right, in those days, if somebody with bad paperwork, legitimate bad paperwork, I'm talking about did stuff to kids, hurt children, right. stepped onto that yard. I don't know, maybe maybe a bogus thing happened, somebody didn't catch it. What were the likelihoods of something happening to that individual? And well, internally for, for the folks I ran with, and this is true for most groups, um, on, on most yards, but especially like I was on a level three yard at first, and then after that I was on a level four yard. Other than that, I was just in a hole and in a shoe. Um, level four yard, you get stabbed. You're, you're gonna get hit with a weapon, guaranteed. Level three yard, you should, in, in that mindset, right? I'm not advocating violence, but in that mindset, you should still get whacked in that environment too, but you might get away with getting hands put on you uh, by a couple people, but you can't stay, right? And because <laughs> politics are dirty, there's always that little exception of the person that is allowed to fly under the radar because of reasons, but. Right, not not yeah. not getting into the politics portion of it because right. it can get real deep and I know what you mean, right. but, but when you reference, you can't stay. Can can you elaborate on that? What does that mean for the viewers? Sure. If the mindset is this, uh, there are certain offenses that are the, the unmentionables, the quote unquote funny charges, right? For which there's really nothing laughable about them. And since long before I started doing time, right, it, it's been decided these folks can't be on the yard. Right, and ninety nine point nine percent is because of who their victims are, who their targets are, right, and and the things that they've done. So you can't be here. If you're like, if Joe Blow has twenty charges, and Joe Blow's allowed to stay, what does that say then about the rest of us? Mm. If we allow somebody like that, right? Mm. So part of it is group image. The last thing you want is another group segment, somebody coming up like, hey, boy, I was in the county with your homeboy and he blah, blah, blah. Or, hey, you know what? He's in jail for something that happened to my sister. Or oh, man. Like, that, right? like, you definitely don't want that. Right. Uh, but also, most of us have women and children in our lives that we care about. Right. Right. And, and there's just something in the culture, right, of these individuals are not to be targeted. Okay. Most people in prison are predators, right? We're, we're all predators in some sense. Um, whether, you know, gang banging, hustling, making money off of other people's addictions, stealing, whatever. It is, it's all predatory behavior. But we have this value system. <laughs> which, take it for what it is, right? Um, right. It, but... Well, at least our prey are these folks, or it's not done this way, right? So I hurt kids because I sell drugs, and the drugs end up in the hands of kids. But I don't hurt kids by taking them into side rooms, and do, you know, I get and it. that kind of stuff. So it just sort of is what it is, but you cannot allow – it's a bad look. You can't allow them to be there. Beyond the – you know, it's, some people want to, to pay a consequence themselves, you know, like – so I, I get it. I needed you to paint that picture, man. Prior, and we're, we're about to jump right into it. You know, I tapped in with you today talking about the integration of the STGs, the security right. threat groups. Back in the day, they called them prison gangs, right? You know, right. there was like seven of them. I got to ask you about your opinion and your insight with the California Department of Corrections with the latest major, major changes, man. One that I was included in, front row seats with the implementation of the non-designated program. Right. And then shortly afterwards, the Fresno Bulldog integration, right? And now, I mean, they're going for it. They're going for it. And, and a lot of people can say, 
hey, they're doing retaliation for the hunger strikes, you know, for, for the big wig, for the big homies that, 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 that got out. This is the retaliation. Like, okay, you guys can say, you guys can play nice, prove it. Right. We're going to test that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, especially with what you just shared and my experience. What's your take on that and why won't that work or, or will it work? You know, it's funny because there's, we tend to, and, and I, I get guilty of this myself, right? We tend to sometimes want to speak in such absolutes, right? Right. The fellas are never going to go for this. That is never going to happen. I have seen with my own eyes when I was in there, a lot of stuff happened that I never thought would happen. Um, that everybody said would never happen. That we said would not happen at the time. And it happened. And I've seen a lot of changes, you know, from the outside since I've been home that really nobody ever thought would happen. And again, everybody said, you know, never, 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 but it has. So there's part of me who my knee-jerk reaction is, nah, these fools are never going to program together, right? And they make no mistake, there's a, a portion of the population who won't, you know? But there's more people programming with them right now than than would have admitted it if you would have asked them five years ago, right? If you got a lot of people on these non-designated yards. They call them 50-50 yards, but they're really not 50-50 anything. So I don't, right. like, that was kind of a, that's a misnomer, right? Uh, so there's a lot of folks on those yards programming alongside people that have dropped out and debriefed. Uh, people that have locked it up over drug debts, people that that have unmentionable offenses, right? And they're all copacetic on the same yards. So it's happening to a degree. Now, a lot was paid for that to happen. There was a lot of bloodshed to get there. You know, it. it I think some people's wills were just kind of broken down. In mm. some sense, CDC outlasted the doing time right um but there's a lot that have not that have not given in have not thrown in the towel have not agreed to program in such a way and the us versus them i think is getting louder and getting stronger and and so while the number of people who just will not tolerate being on a quote-unquote programming yard is smaller than than would have thought it's still not, you know, just a couple guys in one prison. Right. right? We're still talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And the lines are in the sand. Yeah. And and so, yeah, there's there's going to be a lot more bloodshed. And and the group integration stuff, you know, it's, that's the thing with integrating. You're integrating a lot of different moving parts here, right? You're integrating folks that are affiliated. You're integrating folks that, had affiliations and don't anymore you're integrating folks with funny charges you're integrating folks that are just kind of have done their time right yeah. like they've just been doing their time and they don't really fall in any of these groups right um so there's a lot of moving parts in terms of who's going to get along or not get along with who no you're absolutely right um a mixture of it all man the whole mixture you know the funny charges with the guys that fell out of graces by sheer politics man nothing of yeah. their doing and um when you said it's not just one or two individuals taking flight it's hundreds you're right it's hundreds but what i think about is the incident packages the use of force right and sometimes bones get broken in the middle of the use of force. You know what I mean? That's that's going out to the hospital. That's SBI. That's Office of Inspector General looking in. That's Green going under investigation for doing exactly what we were told to do. That's right. us, that's us getting sued, civilly lawsuit. Um, the the whole you know the whole nine. So like, it's I see no strategy. I see no strategy and I see no accountability. It's almost like they're hiding, the higher ups are hiding behind the door and it's like, hey, hey, let's see what happens. I mean, th to me, that's dirty or feels dirty. Yeah, I think you nailed it with the, the, the no accountability, 
right? It's because you're you're right. So we have the dynamic of those doing time that are being integrated, right? And all the stuff that that brings, you know, and it's not just bloodshed. It's not just death. I mean, that that is a reality, right? But right. You know, it's disrupting the program. It's it's you're on a yard, you're programming, everything's going fine. You get your visits, you get your canteen, you got your little holiday, you you know, go on max draw. Then you get put on a bus and you get sent somewhere, you have to start over, right? And so am I even gonna be okay on this yard? I gotta kinda figure that out because who knows these days. Then I gotta try to see if I can find a job to get back to being able to get canteen and getting up to yard. My family now has to visit me over here. It could be very far from you know, even farther from where I was, you know, so there's layers there. The family stress anxiety. Can, can you elaborate on that? Me, you're hitting it right on the head, man. You have an inmate that's programming. You have an individual that's programming, right? And all of a sudden, the powers above yanks them and say, no, we want you to program over here and just put right. them in a bad, put them in an all bad spot. Like you said, dude's now, dude is now right. fighting for his life when the dude was going to school. Can you elaborate on that? Because you had mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I got a homeboy of mine, right? And, and obviously, I'm not going to put his name out there. But I got a homeboy of mine, and, and he's doing time. And he's what you would call a stand-up convict, right? By by any traditional definition. You know what I mean? Uh, he programs better with some people than others. You know? He, he was at a prison. And, and he's got some years left. Not as many as he had when he started, right? He's winding down. There's this big emphasis on rehabilitation, all that other stuff, right? So he's participating in programs. He had a job, a steady job. He'd been at this facility for a few years. Um, you know, not really any, no major, major incidents, you know, to, to justify him being moved out. He's got a routine, right? He's got his wife. His wife comes and sees him. He knows the people on the yard. They know him. He has his program. And he's participating in all that is available to rehabilitate himself. And part of being able to rehabilitate yourself is being able to get a little step outside of strictly survival mode, mm. right? See, prison mentally, a lot of times you're in survival mode. When you're in survival mode, you're not thinking about anything else, right? It, it, incentives don't matter. Consequences don't matter. That, I'm in survival mode. Right. Part of what our loved ones do in time need to be able to do to help the transition to society is be in a space where they're not so much in survival mode. The element, the danger, the unpredictability is always present. There's no there's no nonviolent prison. Right. Um, it's but but as you know, there, there's levels to that stuff. Right. And, and the atmosphere has changed. And so. You get somebody who, like I said, I have my routine now, right? I'm able to stick to my routine. I have this thing that works for me and I'm not causing any issues. I, I'm, I'm not involved in things I shouldn't be involved in. I'm not getting in anybody's way, stepping on anybody's toes. I'm out of the way of the nonsense around me while I'm still also obviously alert of the environment I'm in. Okay, I, I can, in this space, that's where the seeds of hope sometimes can spring up, right? Okay, so I'm taking these classes. I'm doing pretty good at these classes, man. Maybe, maybe there's something to this, mm. right? I'm I'm learning this trade. So I've been doing this for a couple of years. Now I'm getting pretty good. I'm getting pretty good, and maybe I can do this, right? When when I go home, it's you got you know better conversations with your family in the visiting room when yeah. when you don't have a night. You know everything just goes and so that's the unspoken part of quote-unquote rehabilitation you know and it's it's hard to achieve in prison because of the unpredictability but now part of the silver lining maybe of of all this moving all this stuff that's happened is you do have a handful of yards throughout the state where folks are doing their thing so you have some yards that are not integrated. They're, you know, they, they're level four yards, 180s or 270s. They're doing their thing. But they have a space there also. They're, they're in their routine, though. Right? Yeah. They're in their routine. And that's still a rehabilitative routine. You know, hey, 
North and South is getting along ones. We ain't really tripping off True. nothing. We do like, like, okay, we're doing our thing right here, right? A bus comes, you gotta be careful who's on the bus. As long as the bus isn't coming, fuck, we're golden, right? Same thing happening on some of these other yards. The bus is coming can change things. So now this guy who's in this space, he's told to help rehabilitate you, right? To help you transition back to society because this is a necessary step. You don't get to control the program. You don't get to say, I'm happy on this yard, I wanna stay. No, that's not real life. That's not how real life works. We're gonna move you to a whole other prison. And at this prison that you're going to, you're not gonna have full program. See, because we're putting on a yard where you have enemies. And we know they're your enemies because we kept you apart for years and everything's been fine. So, but we've taken some people that we think are friends of yours from other prisons and some of these guys that are friends of them. And we've seen what happens when they mix places. So we know what's going to happen with you. Uh, you're going on a yard with them, but we're going to split it. So one day you get to go outside and your enemies don't. And then the next day you get to go to the day room, your enemies go outside, you know, so don't trip. We're going to keep you guys from crossing paths. Mind you, you all live on the same yard, but we're going to keep you guys from bumping into each other in this, this manufactured crisis that we have now, right? Your work possibilities are going to be less because you're modified. Not everybody on the yard is, but you are, right? Because you're a problem person. But I wasn't a problem person where I just was for years. I ain't been a problem there. Now I'm a problem because you're putting me somewhere to make me a problem. And the other guys there, because I'm not set tripping on who's on what side of the fence. The folks on the other side, I don't want to stab them. They don't want to stab me. You know, like if we're going to be honest, either one of us will, because I'm pretty sure you're going to try. You're pretty sure I'm going to try. So we both really should actually try and, right. and survive it. Survival mode kicks in. Mm. But you can't take the same classes, right? You don't have access to the same holidays. You're at the bottom of the list now because other people have been on that prison for years, right? So that cool job you had, that job's taken over here. That trade you were learning, maybe they don't offer that trade over here, right? The guys you used to play handball with, those guys ain't here. Find some new ones. Good luck. Hopefully you get along with them, right? Your lady, she's going to have to learn how to navigate a different prison. And, and in his case in particular, it's, it's a bit of a longer drive, right? But CDC is saying that's to help you. Well, where's that? How? How's that helping me? Right? Now, I stab somebody, I stay in prison. I get into it, a CO response to the situation. The CO gets hurt. They didn't sign up for this. The lieutenant on the yard didn't ask for me to come here. Right? The, the, the tower cop in the building wasn't like, hey, go pull this dude from this other pinta and put him over here. Let's... I just want to shoot him. Like, no. so everybody is, this is bad for everybody, right? And no matter what, it's even bad for the weirdos and the funny charge people and them like, okay, cool. But you know, you're still just doing your time. It, it's not my job as a convict to protect you, but it's the government's job, right? So <laughs> yeah. it's like, hopefully they do that. You know what I mean? Um, it's, not everybody's chomping at the bit, but I think that's a misunderstanding. CDC painted like these gang members are chomping at the bit to go, or, or these gang members are being so unruly and so unmanageable that we have to mix them because otherwise they're just going to be these arrogant, unruly, unmanageable people when they become your neighbor. <laughs> the furthest thing from the truth, right? But it's... You know, you're you're going from the barracks back to the war zone. Like, why? And and it's all manufactured, and nobody wins. But but also the accountability piece. Who do we hold accountable? Because you have families outside protesting with signs. Right. Right. And they're looking at you guys in green. Hey. Because you're the CEOs that do the escorts. You're the CEOs that open the doors. You're the CEOs that lead people on and off the bus, right? So even though you're just foot soldiers in your own machine, hey, but you're the ones that's there. 
Right. Right. And and same as as folks doing time. And, and so the family suffer, the community suffer, the loved ones suffer, the people doing time, whether they're weirdos or, or whatever. Right. You know, I'm big squares. It don't matter. They all suffer. The seals suffer. You know, it. And there is no accountability because it's not any of ours fault. I can't do something different. My loved one can't do something different. You can't do something different to change the situation we are in. You know? Dude, you just dropped gold, man. That's going to be like history for sure. Like, hey, this, because I say that because you said the unspoken. I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have came up with those words, man, but it's the automatic truth. The whole truth from the family, from the wife and the mothers, having to go through a whole new GPS of having to relocate to a whole nother prison, man. You got, you got windy roads, you got black ice, you got snow, you got, man, no reception at times. Right. It's California's flooded right now. You might have to take a fucking boat at this rate, right? Like it's, so yeah. I was thinking, man, and, what, and I'm glad we're doing this and I'm glad that we are doing this because... The world is watching, man. You know, on my channel, I say a lot, the world is watching I'm because, hey, they got, we got people from New Zealand, like Honduras, like all yeah. over, China, Russia. I saw some people. Um, so they're watching. It, it, what I gathered is moderation. The administration does not have moderation. It's almost like it, it's healthy to eat, right? Everybody must consume and eat. But to force, right. force feed somebody food till they're full and throwing up and, th and sick and that's what it's right. like man. that's kind of that's exactly what it's like it is and it's, you're right i use example a lot of, of water I, you know if we don't consume water we'll die but that doesn't mean you can't drown you know what i mean like right. too much of anything is bad for you um so the issue is is almost like it's like an arrogance it's it's I, I don't know i don't know what it is i i can't get in the mind of cdc administrators but but when i do kind of think of this stuff so like why the fuck are you thinking oh um, <laughs> it's you know it's easy to go to the money piece right like the whole follow the money there's got to be money in here somewhere and we know that there's a lot of money in the institution of policing right right and, and so that kind of gets shuffled around and, and shell games and places so it's like maybe there's some money here, but I don't understand no. it because I feel like it's gonna cost. It's ego, ego, and narcissism. I have seen ego and narcissistic people on a whole other levels. It, mm -hmm. As my time as a lieutenant, as a public information officer, right? Because I was technically rubbing elbows with the big wigs, right. and I felt, man, I had to go home and take a cold shower every after. You know what I mean? But right. the ego, man, because when they walk into a room, you got all those yes men that are. Right. cleaning their shoes and get, hey, let me get that boss and it right. just they're living not in reality man it's not reality right yeah maybe it's a bubble i guess but it's i what you know i i thought and i've been talking about the the integration being a a solution that lacked the problem um <laughs> from from when it first came out right um and, and doing newspaper stuff and, and, and interviews and shit because this makes no sense, right? It's okay, you got, and I, I use generic terms. I, this is not to offend anybody that's done time and what category, I don't care. But, uh, you know, okay, you got your S and Y joints, right? You got your PC prisons and your general population spots. Let the PC yards run how the PC yards run, let the GP yards run how the GP yards run. Like it's been going on like that for a long time. And, and I don't want to go on a whole rabbit hole, but. Even that, where CDC is like, hey, these S and Y yards have become out of control. Fool, you created them. <laughs> you did that, yeah. right? You made it to where anybody on the yard could just go to the program office and be like, hey, man, I, I can't pay for my dope, so I don't want to be here anymore. And you go snatch them up and go put them on another yard somewhere. Facts, right? facts. Hey, you know what, man? I'm kind of tired of this whole hanging out with the guys on this yard thing. I'm like, and and it wasn't the old days where like oh you want to tell on some you got to tell in front of everybody facts you know where you want to drop a kite to a co and he, he'll read the shit out loud oh yeah he made so 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 you know it's make you think twice and again i'm not trying to advance 
uh, uh, you know, criminal organizations or gangs. I'm not promoting that, but just the reality of the atmosphere, right? They changed the atmosphere. They made it very easy to lock it up. They made all these little soft yards that people went to. And granted, the prison gangs also, you know, didn't, uh, uh, weren't the friendliest to their own gente, right? So there, there's that part. There's a lot of factors, but one of them is CDC's action, right? Because, oh, you thought, well, if we make it easy, this is my guess at least. CDC thought, if we make it easy for folks that don't want to fall up under these organizations, you know, rules, if we make it easy for them to roll up off the yard, that's going to strip the power from these gangs, right? No, stupid. <laughs> the gangs existed because you keep locking up and flooding prisons with tons and tons of people. So right. there's no shortage of new people, right? But now these groups go to these yards and they make their own groups and they make their own gangs. But then you don't like how gangs behave on the S and Y side. You're like, well, the gangs over there are mean and they're not as disciplined and there's this and that. Okay, but you did that. Right. You did that. That's your bed, CDC. You lay in it, right? And well, now we can't protect the the PC people, because the S and Y people are kind of getting gangster on the PC people, but we can't put them with the GP people. Right. They made all these little subcategories of people. The vast majority of us were just doing our time, huh? Right, right. We were fucking our time, like there was none of these labels when I was in prison. Not to make myself sound old, but it's you go to prison, you do your time. If you lock it up, you PC up, then you're PC, and if you don't, then you're not, and you do your time, and <laughs> yeah. and then you die or go home. That's what happens, right? So it's then they're like, oh, well, we're gonna let these guys out of the shoe because we right. have to, but it's gonna be World War Three because that's what we've been telling everybody forever right. is, hey, this is the worst of the worst. When we let them out, they run every criminal operation in the country just from this little cell, and blah blah blah. She let him out and everybody started playing handball together. And she, right. she was like, I'm not a bitch. Okay. Right. Well, somebody's going to fight, damn it. <laughs> somebody's going to fight. Because how do we justify being the authoritarians of this deadly environment? If it's not really looking super deadly, right? Like, it's we, we need violence. So they're like, fine, now, okay, great. Since you guys are able to get along you know, with each other, how about you get along with people with unmentioned offenses against women and children? And, oh, yeah, I'm going to put you on the yard with the dude that told on you, you know, <laughs> when you got 20 years ago, right? Like, <laughs> let's see how far this getting along goes now. It's ridiculous. Like, oh, what the fuck? And now the groups are getting along, stuff's happening, and they're like, hey, well, the Bulldogs ain't mixing right. You know, we're having a hard time with them. And I almost feel like it's their last stand. Like, you've accomplished almost everything you wanted to. You got a ton of non-designated program facilities. Way more than people like me ever thought there would be, right? So, okay, kudos, CDC. You said you were going to do it. People lost dates. People lost their lives. Because right. A lot of stuff right. happened. But, okay, if, you know, you got blood on your hands. But sure enough, you did accomplish it on a pretty large scale. Let these dudes that are holdouts, they're like, hey, I, I don't want to play. Leave them in their own damn sandbox, right? Like, in society, <laughs> you don't go try to hang out with people that you know you don't get along with, True. right? Um, that's actually a mature mindset. Damn. That's a rehabilitated mindset to, to be self-aware and humble enough to know if I go over here, there's a chance my temper is going to get the best of me. Mm. There's a chance I'm going to piss one of them off. There's a chance something's going to happen. And it's not because I'm a punk or because they're right. punk. It's just I don't want that. I just don't want it. I want to go to work, do my job, and come home, hang out with, with the lady and kids, right? That's a mature, rehabilitated mindset as opposed to that macho chest puffed out. Oh, fuck, can't tell me nothing, Holmes. I'll go wherever. And it's like CD's got that ah oh, fuck can't tell me huh attitude while the convicts are like hey just like dude, we're doing the best we've made some pretty big strikes here homes we've made some pretty big strikes like like world not world changing but but 
state changing for, for sure. You know, that North South getting along playing handball, regardless of what anybody thinks of it, it's it's a hell of an accomplishment that that plenty of people have died trying to accomplish in the past and were told no because it's a cowardice move. Right. And that happened. Folks should be patting themselves on the back. CDC, if they were smart with the little propaganda campaigns, they could take a victory lap for that. Right, right, right. Look, look what not, in 50 years, these bottles ain't got along. But, and somehow insert themselves as see the choices we made, made it happen. It'd all be bullshit, but it would right. sound good. As opposed to what they're doing now. And it's almost like, I'm going to make, we're going to make these bulldogs get along with people on the yard. No. The dogs don't like them. They don't like the dogs. They don't have to like each other. Right. Let them not like each other from a distance. Right? No, we're going to make them fight it out and stab each other. And and we're going to make people die until we get our way. <laughs> and it's like, well, just take, take the W. You know what I mean? I, I feel like they think they're taking an L right now because certain groups aren't a hundred percent. Dude, that's a W for CDC. Take your W and, and, and let folks do their time and go home. You know? Uh, no, I hear you, man. We, we, we're going for it. We went for it on this one, dude. Um, I talked to some important people in prison on some of those yards, man. And the, the conversations we had were um, confusion. I was confused just as much as they were confused. Like, what is this? What is this, man? I've been away for so long. I come out here. This is, <laughs> right, like yeah. ab abnormal, abnormal. It's. I made a video earlier, and I talked about we, we don't even do co cops and robbers anymore. At least people yes. res at least people respect cops and robbers. You know what right. I mean? You got people right. doing their illicit thing, and then you got the people trying to catch them. Sure. But this is like, man, you're letting the homie drive the police car, right? Then one day you want to give him a ticket. Then you want to thank him for stealing the police car. You right. want to, you know what I mean? You want to give him a, a laptop and you're just like, hey, what is going on here? You know, right. like it's just wild. So real quick, real quick before we wind down, you know, you mentioned non-designated program a lot. You know, RJD Echo Facility was probably the second one in the state of California. I think Mule Creek was the first one. The level two, there's like three buildings with the pods, six men to a six men to a dorm. Okay. When they say non-designated programming or that they're programming, man, just a couple months ago you had a sergeant getting beat up in the middle of the yard by an EOP, man, and they actually called a code one. Two inmates fighting on the radio because all they saw was a dust cloud in the dirt. Uh, oh wow! You know what I mean? So. Dudes are... Yeah, programming is... I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I mean, I didn't know that, but it programming is relative, right? Like, it's... Hey, you got dudes with weapons. Selective. Yeah, they, they, by no means is it 100% programming. It's still, like right. you said, it's still prison. Mm -hmm. Right. You got wild stuff happening, man. So you're right. It's propaganda by CDCR saying... And, and you're right, dude. They should have, They should have just taken the W... But no, man, it's like they want to, it's like they're trying to do one up each other into the worst possible things. Right. It, it's, I don't, <laughs> you know, you ever, like, I, you know, I got a dog, right? I got kids too. And I, and I, I say that because they actually all, they all do the same thing sometimes. We just sit back and watch them. You're like, What's your goal here? Like, how do you picture this playing out in your mind? Because from where I sit, I mean, it's entertaining, oh. but not how I would choose to spend my time. Like, what right. the hell are you, right? Um, that's what it's like watching CDC. But the hard part is, you know, with kids, it's all fun and games, right? It's 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 some waste of time, you know. Um, uh, and the same thing with my dog, right? Uh. But here we're talking about real people, you know what I mean? Real, real people. And if I live by a principle, there is nothing more valuable than a human life. And, and I believe that. And those are, that's what's at stake here. Right. And 
who knows? It, it, I'm not a not the biggest fan of law enforcement, right? Right, right. Um, not the biggest fan of the system of policing. Uh, I've run across individuals such as yourself and and some others that I do get along with. We can talk and 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 very mature, and I value that. I really appreciate that, and it's helped me grow my understanding of things, right? Uh, so my issue is more systemic than than individuals, but it. I don't know if there's a way, but shit, nobody thought North and South get along. So now it's almost like anything's possible, right? Like you know, uh, for the COs and the convicts and the families, which there's legacy of distrust between all those groups, right? Between families and COs, between COs and families of, of folks doing time, obviously between folks doing time and COs and vice versa, right? There's there's just generations of of a wall there, right? But all are suffering. It, it reminds me of the organizations getting together in the Bay and their door policy and saying, hey, you know what? They're popping the doors because they know that we're obligated by our own policies to try to kill each other. And they're just having fun shooting us and shit. Like, so we're only losing in this. We really don't actually win anything. And, you know, in the Bay, you oftentimes get along with your neighbors, even if they're the utmost rivals, right? Yeah. Um, and so they sat and they talked, and they were like, you know what? How about this? When the doors pop, I'm not turning down a conflict, and I don't expect you to turn down a conflict, but I'm not going to instigate one either. So if I don't instigate and you don't instigate, then we don't have a problem. Right. But both of us stay faith. Neither one of us are, are being cowards, punks. We both reserve the right to do whatever we feel like we got to do, right? Um, but but we're going to tell our people, only jump if you feel threatened. And don't come across as threatening. Okay, well, everybody gets the same damn memo. It works out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. So it because we were we were rivals, but we were both losing at the hands of this other force behind the screen. In that case, it was COs, right. right? COs are losing, families are losing, convicts are losing. If there's some way not to join together, you know, like I don't picture COs and, right, and right. convicts all in the yard together, right? Let's right, not right. Too great. right. Um, but for the purpose of this issue, just like that was for the purpose of doors popping. Mm -hmm. That's all it was about. It was just about doors popping just for the purpose of this integration. If there's some way to get the attention, cause you're doing your part with your channel, right? And, and which is great because there's not a lot of, of folks that have a history working in the system that are going to be that voice and, and everybody's got to calculate their own risks. Right. Right. Oh, uh, but, but there are people out there. And, and so some way, to maybe get a bigger spotlight. I don't know what that looks like. Um, but this is a lose-lose for everybody. It, for everybody, period. You know? No, I agree, dude. I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. And I agree, man, 100%. And I like to remind the folks in green, too, just like how you stated. Like, hey, man, it's still prison. Still still, still going to crack off, right? Everybody better be on their right. toes because it's still prison, right? And um, yeah. so... Yeah, but I agree, man. We're I think we're moving uh forward. Forward progress, right? At least we got the attention of a lot of people, that's for damn sure. Yeah. Uh, um yeah. before we close that out, is there anything you want to say to the audience? Anything you want to say? Uh your your social media plugs, your channel, where they can find you. Yeah, no, I appreciate the time. Uh, uh sorry you, you happened to hit me up about a subject that I'm pretty passionate about. It's all no, I loved it, bro. Me. It's all good. But um uh, uh, just the homie hangout, you know, the homie hangout is a YouTube channel, Instagram and Facebook, you know, you can find me there. I have a website, the homie hangout. Um, it's, it's still being developed. So, uh, you know, maybe bookmark it, but we'll for go sure. check it out next week. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, and, and yeah, I appreciate it. Just help others move with extras, man. That's what homies do. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for being on the show, dude. Uh, it was a pleasure, Good man. Part. With that guys, thanks, man. uh, let me close it out real quick with that guys. 
Uh, the message for today was pretty self-explanatory, man. Save this video because it's going to be history. Keep pushing forward.